the next group of animals we're going to talk about are the Lophotrochozoans. Um, these guys um, are eumetazoa, that means that they're true animals and they have true tissues. Um, they are in the group bilater bilateria, sorry, and they are triploblastic. Um, that means they have three tr tissue layers. So everything uh, fr from now on will be all of those things. Now the uh, Lophotrochozoan uh, is, um, the group is based on uh, what they know, uh, what is called a lophophore, and um, the other thing is a trochophore larva. So let's just look at that and see what that looks like. Um, a, a lophophore for has a like comb-shaped uh, tentacles or uh, extensions at the top of their bodies, and this is of course for uh, filter feeding. Um, and uh, so not all of the groups have this. Uh, particular look but um, all of them have something that is similar and the trochophore larva is common in this group um, and that looks kind of like this it looks like a little top that is swimming around um, and it has a separate mouth and anus as uh, many of the groups from now on will will have um, so we haven't seen that so far uh, so far we've been looking at things that just have one opening all right so that's kind of a a new feature and it's in the larva as well as the adult on most of these uh, most if not all of these forms. Okay so the first group we're going to talk about is platyhelminthes. Uh, these are flatworms. Uh, flatworms um, live in damp environments or they can live in soil. Some of them are marine, some of them are parasitic and so they live in a host. Um, and they are bilateral, bilateral and they are flattened dorsoventrally. That means that they are flattened from top to bottom. Just a uh, really quick look at, look at these. Um, they uh, literally look like a little uh, piece of bacon, <laughs> uh, sort of. And uh, we'll talk a little bit more about this uh, diagram in a second. Um, they can be really, really small, like microscopic, or they can be almost 20 meters long. In fact, there's a species of tapeworm, which is, um, is one of these, and uh, that <laughs> I heard they use for a diet pill, and they took one out of somebody that was like um, really, really long, so they were like pulling them out of their intestines. Anyway, um, <laughs> it's a nice way to diet, right? Uh, they are acelomates, that means that they do not have a coelom. They have three tissue layers, however, so they have an endoderm, an ectoderm, and a mesoderm. And um, all the cells basically are going to be exposed to the outside or with one uh, tissue, one cell layer um, from the outside. And we'll, we'll talk more about how, how that occurs in just a second. Uh, they have cephalization, meaning they have a head, they have eye spots and ganglia where their eyes uh, would be. So these are sensory organs, not like eyes like ours, but uh, they do sense light. Uh, and typically a lot of these guys are going away from the light because light will dry them out. Um, and they have a ventral lateral nerve cord, that is ventral means bottom and nerve cords, uh, lateral of course means on the side, and so these are kind of on the bottom and the side of this organism. They all have, also have something called flame cells. These are the first uh, nephridia or proto-nephridia that are for the excretory system, meaning getting rid of nitrogenous waste. And uh, they have a branch gas gastrovascular cavity. All right, so let's just look at that for a second. So this is um, the organism, and you couldn't necessarily, although oftentimes you can, even on a microscope, see their digestive tract that is branched on the inside. Um, this is not just a digestive tract because what happens is that they suck in water from the outside, and um, that water will contain oxygen. It will also contain food. Um, and they will suck it in, it'll go through their digestive tract. Uh, the digestive tract then can absorb uh, wa water, nutrients, and it can also absorb oxygen, and it will get rid of carbon dioxide and nitrogen within this, car uh, this uh, digestive tract. Now what happens uh, with the food waste and the carbon dioxide is it will just be expelled with the water. Um, the nitrogen waste would build up a little too high in these organisms, 
uh, nitrogen waste from the processing of proteins. And um, so what they have is the flame cells and the flame cells are a little um, kind of, well, the reason why they're called the flame cells, they look kind of like a little flame bulb that is sticking out into this gastrovascular cavity um, and it will remove or collect nitrogen waste and shunt it to the outside of the body. All right, so when it does that, it's when it, it, it creates a um, diffusion gradient, in other words, when it takes it out, there's no nitrogen then in the tube that draws more nitrogen in and so forth. So it'll uh, basically, it's like a little teeny kidney that is dumping the waste to the outside uh, environment. Uh, here it's showing you the dorsal uh, ventral nerve cords as well and the eye spots where um, ganglia would occur around them. That is nerve ganglia. That's kind of like the beginning of the brain. Okay. Um, and uh, so, so uh, just to reiterate, all the cells then are exposed to the outside environment either through via the va gastrovascular cavity or from the actual outside. Um, so either way, the cells can get what they need. Uh, so in terms of respiratory system, that is happening on the cellular level. The flame cell is the first excretory system. And of course, digestive is also happening basically on the, the cellular level, but it does have a gastrovascular cavity in and out one opening. All right. So, um, and, and you know how I was just saying that the trochophore larva has a separate mouth and anus. So the larva may have a separate mouth and anus, but the actual uh, organism in this case does not, okay? Um, it just has a pharynx. Um, they reproduce asexually, but uh, you can cut them in half and they'll make another. Um, or they can do sexually, um, but they are hermaphroditic. In other words, they are male and female, uh, but they do copulate. So uh, one will copulate with the other and, and uh, switch, switch whatever they need. Actually, they'll fertilize each other. Um, okay, and then the classes. Uh, the classes are catanulita, which are chain worms. They go by the old name of mon mon mongenia, sorry. And um, the uh, rap rapididi, I'm sorry, rapiditophora, which you can tell I'm not very good at saying these. Um, and they have three subclasses, uh, two tubularia, which are the planaria. Those are the typical flatworms like in the picture. Uh, trematoda, which are flukes. And cestoda, which are tapeworms, all right? So let's just look at uh, this for a second. So these are, uh, this was in the old textbook. I like to show them though, because it shows you some of the examples here. So these three right here are the Raptidophora, um, and these guys um, are the um, Catanulita, all right? So these are the chain worms. Um, all the rest of these, and you can see some of these, uh, you might recognize the flatworms like I was saying, um, but uh, Trematoda like liver flukes or um, the intestinal, um, tapeworm um, are here, I'm sorry, uh, these are all flukes, I guess, and these guys are the tapeworms, all right? And you'll look at the tapeworms a little closer in lap. So because of that, I'm just going to show you uh, the tapeworm, if I can figure out which way it goes. There we go. All right, so the, here's the tapeworm. It has segments. It has uh, reproductive structures um, for every segment, also has these protonephridia for every segment. Um, it does not have, you know, a digestive uh, tract for every segment it's absorbing things from the outside. It does have a head region though, and this head region uh, has hooks and suckers. Uh, it's, all, it's called a scolex, and that is attaching to the intestinal wall. So it, it will absorb um, some things through, via the head, um, but every segment also can absorb, all right? Um, <laughs> another one is uh, flukes. Here's a, an example of um, how they how they travel through the body. So they have the ciliated larva. Um, these can in, infect a host like a snail or something like that. Then they will have a motile lar larva that can swim and then get into a human host. All right, and then they would infect the cells. <coughs> okay. 
So the next group, let me just um, show you just kind of where it is on the tree here. So what we're talking about are these guys right here, all right? So um, <clears throat> notice that we were talking before, metazoa would be these, and the new metazoa is everything else. <coughs> all right, so the next phyla is Cindermata. Uh, this used to be called Rotifera. Um, because it, it contains rotifers mainly. These are also damp environments. Uh, they are pseudocoelomates, so that means that they do have a cavity. It's just not a true cavity. It's not surrounded by mesoderm on both sides, um, but it acts like a hydrostatic skeleton. What that means is that um, it will give the body some rigidity with the fluid that is inside of that pseudocoelom. Um, later on in us, for example, our sea loam does not have any fluid in it. It's completely sterile and um, the organs are expanding and contracting within that, uh, that area. All right, so um, as also um, in the pseudocelum, in that fluid, are flame cells. So these are the proto nephridia again, and uh, they're going to get rid of nitro nitrogenous waste that are coming from the cells. Um, they are, they have an alimentary canal, which means they have a separate mouth and anus. So this is the first time that the adult form actually has that. Um, they have brain ganglia and eye spots, just, uh, kind of like the flatworms. Um, a little, slightly more developed, um, maybe, but they're very, very small, so it doesn't seem like it. Um, and they have a dorsal nerve cord, uh, meaning that it's running on the top. Uh, the oxygen and carbon dioxide are in and out of, of the cells. Uh, these are really small organisms, so... Um, they can do it just on the cellular level, so again, no respiratory system. And uh, their reproduction is by parthenogenesis generally. Uh, that is, male, uh, females can produce female, uh, unfertile from, uh, other females from unfertilized eggs, so they're haploid females. And um, like bees, uh, do, do the same thing. And uh, they have sometimes sexual reproduction, usually when things are going bad. In other words, when uh, things are drying out, they'll have sexual reproduction. Uh, they have very short-lived uh, males. They'll um, make a uh, resistant zygote uh, that can last for a long period of time in extreme dry or cold conditions. So uh, that's, that's rotifers. Um, you might have remember seeing these in core one if you actually took it live if you didn't take it live you probably uh, didn't get a chance to look at it um all right so the next two phyla we're not really covering very deeply we're just going to mention them uh because they are in these uh they have a you know the loaf pores um and uh this one the ectoprocta actually really literally uh looks like a plant because of its loaf of it kind of sticks up and hangs out and it's, uh, they're marine, uh, they're colonial. Uh, you might see them as part of a, a reef or attached to the, um, the bottom of the ocean floor. Um, some of them can be in freshwater as well. Um, and these guys are coelomates. So this is the first time that we see a coelom, which is why I'm kind of mentioning this group, even though uh, we're not gonna cover very much more about it. Um, then the last phyla that we're going to cover to, uh, in this video is um, uh, um, brachiopoda. Uh, brachiopoda are called lamp shells. Again, they have the loaf of forest, so they're like sticking out. Um, they're marine and they're reef organisms as well. And um, they uh, are mo more closely DNA-wise related to mollusks and annelida. So they're considered higher level, even though... Uh, they look and have a lot of the same features as ectoproctic.